else may be fighting it. Odds of an attack. A top senator this morning predicting there's a 70% chance that President Trump will attack North Korea if Kim Jong-un makes one particular move. Omarosa's controversial interview, the former Apprentice star raising more questions than answers about her White House exit. I have seen things that have made me uncomfortable, that have upset me. This morning, what former press secretary Sean Spicer is now saying. Lost in the mail, the shocking ordeal this couple went through after they say UPS lost their $800,000 inheritance check. Plus, an end to an era today in the world of online chat. From ABC News in New York, this is America This Morning. All right, everyone, we made it to Friday. Good Ooh. morning. <laughs> I'm Kendis Gibson. And I'm Eva Pilgrim, in for Diane Maceda. We begin with new uncertainty surrounding the sweeping tax bill that President Trump is eagerly waiting to sign. Yes, yeah, Senator Marco Rubio says that he is withholding his crucial support unless he gets a key provision that he wants. He's now the second so-called defector and any more than two senators to vote no from the Republican sides. That would derail the bill. ABC's Arlette Science has new details from Washington. Good morning, Arlette. Kendis Neva, good morning. President Trump is eager to sign a tax bill by Christmas, but as Congress barrels towards votes next week, the Republican tax plan is in limbo. President Trump is sounding optimistic Republicans will deliver on a tax plan by Christmas. I think we will get there. It'll be in a very short period of time. It will be the greatest Christmas present that a lot of people have ever received. But on Capitol Hill, there are signs of trouble. Senator Marco Rubio is a no unless the bill further expands the child tax credit. Unless they can figure out a way to add to the 1100 figure, um, I, I won't support the bill. Senator Bob Corker is expected to vote no as well. He's concerned about the $1.5 trillion the plan could add to the deficit. Two more GOP senators are undecided. Senate Republicans can only afford to lose two votes. They haven't released their final plan yet, leaving Democrats in the dark. Have you seen the new Republican bill yet? I have not. Here's what we've learned. For the wealthy, the plan lowers the top tax rate from 39 down to 37 percent. For big business, it cuts the corporate tax rate from 35 to 21 percent. And for middle class Americans, the plan doubles the standard deduction. For those who itemize, it keeps current deductions on medical expenses and student loan interest. But advocates for the middle class warn it caps state and local income and property tax deductions at just $10,000. The plan also scraps a key component of Obamacare, the individual mandate requiring that all Americans have insurance. That could leave 13 million more uninsured over the next decade. The final tax plan compromise is likely going to be released on Monday, and the Senate is expected to start voting early next week. Candace and Eva, this is something that they are going to have to make sure that they have all the yes votes from Republicans in order to pass. Yeah, and as such, uh, Mike Pence has delayed a trip overseas, Arlette. Thank you. Well, as Republicans race to pass their tax bill, it's not clear if Senator John McCain will be on Capitol Hill for the vote next week. McCain is in the hospital being treated for side effects from his cancer therapy. He's fighting an aggressive form of brain cancer, but his office says he is looking forward to returning to work. In the meantime, House Speaker Paul Ryan is denying reports that he plans to leave Congress after the midterm elections next November. On Thursday, he told reporters, quote, I ain't going anywhere. Well, Senator Lindsey Graham is warning that a U.S. attack on North Korea may be imminent if Kim Jong-un launches another long-range ballistic missile. Graham told The Atlantic magazine there's a 70 percent chance that President Trump would use military options if North Korea tests another nuclear bomb. Now, Graham says time is running out and if nothing changes the president will have to use force the u.n says it's investigating claims that iran is arming rebels in yemen u.s ambassador nikki haley claims markings on recovered rocket fragments have iranian missile fingerprints she says the missile parts might as well have stickers that say made in iran if her claims are true, Iran could be violating U.N. Security Council resolutions related to the nuclear deal. Iran calls the accusations fake. 
The FCC has voted along party lines to repeal the so-called internet neutrality rules, but it could be months before we see any changes. New York and Washington State are among those vowing to sue to stop the decision from taking effect. Those rules forced internet providers to treat all web traffic equally, creating what supporters say was an equal playing field for all internet users. But Republicans say the rules stifled the free market. This decision will not break the internet. What we are doing is reverting back to the highly successful, bipartisan, governmental approach that existed before 2015. The public can plainly see that a soon to be toothless FCC is handing the keys to the internet over to a handful of multi-billion dollar corporations. The major internet providers are promising not to stop or slow any legal content. And while the companies could charge new fees, many analysts say fears of a consumer backlash will force them to think twice before doing so. The suspect in that deadly car attack in Charlottesville, Virginia, last summer is now facing a first-degree murder charge. James Fields, a self-described neo-Nazi, is accused of driving his vehicle into a crowd of counter-protesters during that rally by white supremacist Heather Heyer died during the attack 35 others were injured a firefighter has now died in the line of duty battling that massive fire in southern california 32 year old corey iverson was with cal fire san diego for eight years and is survived by a pregnant wife and a two-year-old daughter he was fighting the thomas fire which is growing and threatening more towns in ventura and santa barbara counties evacuation orders have now been issued for fillmore and shifting winds are posing a new threat today. Uh, just, just an incredible guy, a, a loving father, um, a, a, you know, a loving husband, and, and um, you know, today at the house, uh, we we went through all the ranges of emotion. I think that you can go through when one of these tragedies occurred, um, and the entire family just spoke about, you know, why Corey. An accident review team will now investigate Iverson's death. And time now for a look at your weather on this Friday morning. Winter storm warnings are in effect right now because of lake effect snow that is moving across the Great Lakes and across western New York. Where up to a foot of snow is possible, another storm could dump and develop along the coast tomorrow, bringing snow from the Delmarva Peninsula to Cape Cod. And here's a look at your high temperatures today. It'll be below freezing in New York, Boston, and Chicago, below 60 as far south as Dallas, 40s for the northwest, and near 80 in Los Angeles today. Well, coming up right here, the new allegations against actor Dustin Hoffman. Also ahead, a rider is thrown from a jet ski, the dramatic crash, and his rescue caught on camera. In Star Wars, The Last Jedi hitting theaters overnight. The first reviews from fans coming up. Hoffman is facing new claims of sexual misconduct this morning. Three women have detailed their allegations against him in Variety magazine. One of the women says Hoffman exposed himself to her in 1980 when she was 16 years old. The other women accuse Hoffman of assault. Hoffman's attorney calls the allegations defamatory falsehoods. In the meantime, the NYPD is now investigating sexual misconduct allegations against music mogul Russell Simmons. Nearly a dozen women have come forward. A spokesperson says Simmons will fully cooperate. He denies the accusations. NASA has discovered a planet in a solar system far, far away. It's being called Kepler 90i and it's rocky with a temperature of 800 degrees. It's about 2,500 light years away. Here's why it's significant. It orbits the star Kepler 90, making it the eighth planet in the Kepler system. That ties our solar system for the most planets orbiting a single sun. We have planet envy then. <laughs> yes. Okay, so Star Wars fans say the force is strong with the latest installment of the saga. The Last Jedi hit theaters overnight, making $45 million, according to estimates, in those preview screenings on Thursday alone. Critics have been raving. One review said, for the first time in a long time, a Star Wars movie feels like it's moving forward. As for super fans, to borrow from Darth Vader, many say, the Last Jedi is impressive, very impressive. Yes! Uh, we're going Saturday, we're going again Tuesday. Uh, just awesome. 
just so great. Got my Jedi Order tattoo that just just for this movie. Yes. <laughs> Look at that. I feel like I can conquer the galaxy. I have no idea what you're saying. <laughs> so another reviewer said, you don't have to be a Star Wars fan to love this film, and it works even if you haven't seen the other movies. I was at the first screening here on the East Coast last night, and it actually, like from the moment the Lucasfilm uh, logo came up, everybody was cheering. They cheered throughout the movie. There were some special surprise appearances throughout that uh, got the fans all going. But would you pay multiple times to see it again? Oh, there are some folks that we interviewed who were going to go see it in for the next four days. That's expensive. It is expensive, but it's worth it. It's been two years. I guess. <laughs> it's like 20 bucks to go to the movies these days. Yeah. <laughs> well, coming up, another college fraternity in big trouble. Yeah, but first, reaction pouring in after Omarosa's second big interview, the new questions about her White House exit and what Sean Spicer is saying about it. And one couple's battle after they say UPS lost their $800,000 inheritance check. We're back with a frightening reminder to slow down in the snow. Watch it right here. The driver crashing through a median, not to the opposite side of a highway near Milwaukee. It was all caught on a police officer's dash cam. That officer was only 10 feet away. We do turn now, though, our focus to that one name that is sparking debate across the country. Amarosa. Oh, yeah. Her interview on Good Morning America was followed by another sit down where she raised even more questions about her time as a senior White House aide. Perhaps the only thing clear this morning is that Amarosa isn't going away anytime soon. This morning, Amarosa is fueling new questions about diversity and conflict within the Trump administration. I have seen things that have made me uncomfortable, that have upset me, that have affected me deeply and emotionally, that has affected my community and my people. And when I can tell my story, it is a profound story that I know the world will want to hear. The former Apprentice contestant denies being fired, saying she resigned after talking to Chief of Staff John Kelly about concerns within the White House. I talked to him about some concerns that I had, about issues, uh, about one very urgent issue and pressing issue that would affect the president. And, um, and An so... An urgent and pressing issue? Absolutely. That would affect the president absolutely. in a dangerous way? In a big way. Amarosa claims a lack of diversity often left her feeling alone. 22 staffers earned their top White House salary of $179,000. Amarosa was the only African American among that group. And Secretary Ben Carson is the only black cabinet member. The administration is pushing back, saying it's a diverse team. We always want to continue to grow the diversity here. We're going to continue to do that uh, and continue to work hard. I, I don't have a, a number directly in front of me, specifically not uh, African American. Amarosa says the president was sad when he learned of her departure. Did Amarosa share her concerns with you? I like Amarosa. Amarosa is a good person. Thank you, Now, Amarosa is promising to tell her story after her official last day on the job next month. Now, meanwhile, former White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer told Fox News he's not even sure why Amarosa was hired at the White House. A fraternity at the University of Houston has been indicted for abusing a pledge during a hazing ritual. The local chapter of Pi Kappa Alpha was indicted. Prosecutors say a pledge was forced to go without food, water, and even sleep for three days. He suffered a lacerated spleen. Prosecutors say he had a mental breakdown. If I get it, you know, it's a frat, and there's a process of joining, but there's also a line you got to draw, and you can't be crossing that line. We want this to serve notice that to all the universities, the fraternities, the students, their parents, that hazing is a crime and hazing will be prosecuted. It's very unusual to have a fraternity prosecuted, but if convicted, the frat could be fined up to $10,000. A dramatic rescue in St. Petersburg, Florida. A man riding a jet ski was thrown into the water, knocked unconscious after a crash. You see it there ahead of you. Thankfully, an off-duty sheriff's deputy was nearby, raced in to save him. He was face down in the water, but the deputy reaching him right there. The deputy, Alex Floyd, got in there in time. The man is going to be okay. Some good news this morning. Today is free shopping day for online shoppers. About 1,000 major retailers, including Macy's, JCPenney, Target, and Best Buy, are waiving their shipping fees. There's no minimum purchase needed, and delivery is guaranteed by Christmas Eve.
Well, here's something you don't want to lose in the mail. A Canadian woman says UPS lost her $846,000 inheritance check from her family. Lorette Taylor and her husband say UPS only offered them a $32 refund. <laughs> the check, which was actually a bank draft, was lost in February. But here is the good news. The bank finally sent them a new one. Granted, it was 10 months later. And the bank is saying that they could have done more to resolve the issue sooner. I think. Oh, uh, yeah, a lot sooner, right? In sports, a lot of horsepower uh, was promised on Thursday Night Football. Yeah, we say horsepower because you have the Broncos and the Colts who were going at it. Denver went into um, full stride here in the third quarter, scoring two touchdowns. Look at it there. And they never looked back, actually. They won the game 25-13 from there. There was a frightening injury. The Colts' Brandon Williams suffering a concussion on this play it's right there. That's kind of scary to watch. Uh -huh. Coming up, the end of an error online. Uh, also ahead, bake news. The White House press secretary <laughs> sets the record straight about her pie-making skills. Well, that's very clever. And Indeed. the surprising gift Queen Elizabeth gives her staff for Christmas. Fond farewell to AOL Instant Messenger signing off for, for good after a 20-year run. As of today, it's a thing of the past. It ruled the world on, uh, of online communication long before Facebook and Snapchat, but it failed to evolve as the world shifted to smartphones. All right, and in Washington, Pygate has officially come to a close. This all started, if you remember, on Thanksgiving when Press Secretary Sarah Sanders tweeted a picture of a pecan pie she says that she made. That started a running joke with reporter April Ryan who questioned whether Sanders really made the pie. So here it is, Sanders baking four pecan pie, and this time she documented every step of the process and shared the pie with the press corps as well. Well, Queen Elizabeth is going a bit budget on Christmas this year. She always buys a traditional Christmas pudding for everyone on her staff. Yeah, this year she bought the pudding at the discount supermarket chain Tesco. They cost 10 bucks each. And a man's business card is becoming an internet sensation. Yeah, it's because a Twitter user posted this image with the caption, I asked this guy, how tall are you? And he handed me this. It's a business card that says, yes, I am tall. I am six foot ten. No, I don't play basketball. I play volleyball. Yes, the weather up here is nice. Bill has hit a snag now that Senator Marco Rubio is threatening to vote no. Rubio wants to expand the child tax credit. Senate Republicans can afford to lose only two more votes. Texas Congressman Blake Farenthold says he will not seek re-election. The decisions follow new sexual harassment claims that have been made against him. A new fallout for the USA Gymnastics program after former team doctor Larry Nasser's molestation scandal. Two major sponsors, Procter & Gamble and Kellogg's, are no longer supporting the team. Looking at today's weather, gusty winds pose a new danger for firefighters in Southern California. Some rain and snow for the Pacific Northwest, showers along the Gulf Coast, and lake effect snow around the Great Lakes and into the Northeast. Well, finally from us, the late night comics and their take on Doug Jones' big Senate win in Alabama. Here now, your Friday funnies. It was a major upset. A Republican losing to a Democrat in Alabama is like a grizzly bear losing to a fish. It just doesn't happen. <laughs> Democrat won in Alabama because a Democrat actually ran for Senate in Alabama. Jeff Sessions ran unopposed in 2014 and won with 97% of the vote. The other 3% was just Jeff Sessions being too tiny to reach the voting lever. To all my Jewish friends, happy Hanukkah! Doug Jones is so nice, he even thanked the seven Jewish people in Alabama. I like that. Just take a look at these numbers. Jones got 30% of white voters and 96% of African Americans. I think that means African Americans get an A+, plus, while white voters will be held back to repeat the civil rights movement. Oh, oh no, what happened? Oh, oh. oh, what happened? My back is hurting. Oh, no, mm. your back hurts? Yeah, every black woman's back is hurting from carrying the election last night. Oh. African-American women in Alabama really dealt Trump a blow last night. And Trump reached out to them today by firing his only female African-American advisor because Omarosa is leaving the White House. <laughs> Folks, this is, this is huge. That's big news. With Omarosa gone, who's going to be in charge of... <laughs> Pay special attention to the very enthusiastic gentleman in the middle. Doug Jones has been elected the United States Senator. I can barely hear myself. Never seen Bernie Sanders so excited, so 
<laughs> Bernie, is that Bernie Sanders? It looks like Bernie Sanders fired up. There was also another kid that was at that party who knew where the cameras were, and he just kept.